of pressure, like you're saying, if you're in the second signing day. But Daxton Hill's an example of the pressure you can still have on the first signing day. Now, he had a great high school football career playing in the state of Oklahoma. To the tune of him being a top 15 recruit in the country this year, he was the Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year this season. But here's his deal, right? He was with Michigan. Then 11 days before the first signing day, he flipped to Alabama. Then on signing day back in December, he flipped back to Jim Harbaugh, and he is the headline of a Michigan class that is impressive. It, again, looks like the top class in the Big Ten with Daxton Hill up on top. Now, Chris Hinton is another guy right behind him, another five-star guy who was committed to this team for a long time. August of 2017 was his first time that he committed to Michigan. Zach Charbonnet is a running back who might get an opportunity right away. This is a very talented Michigan class, and one of the very talented guys is talking to our Jerry DiNardo just a couple feet away. Chair? Trevor, how are you? Good, how are you? Sitting with uh, Trevor Keegan. A couple of basic questions before we get started. Is it true you have makeup on? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is. Yeah. I, I do as well. So, uh, You're going to be part of Michigan's class, number one class in the Big Ten. Right now, they're ranked eighth in the country. Yes, sir. Simple. Why Michigan? It's just everything that came down to it, you know, it just made sense. Uh, the football program is a very historical program. Um, the academics were a huge positive in my decision making in this process. And especially my whole family's from there, so it just made sense. I was comfortable, and it just felt good at the end to go there. You're an offensive lineman. A lot of quarterbacks, receivers, maybe running backs look at the style of offense that the people that are recruiting them run to see if they fit in. Did that have anything to do with you as an offensive lineman? Absolutely. You know, uh, Coach Warner, he's really changed his pro program around this year. You know, the offensive line has had a tremendous amount of progress this year. And, like, it's just really something I want to be part of. I mean, you can see their numbers. It's changed tremendously this year. For the people watching, when you visit campus, you always have a host, a present player on the program mm -hmm. that hosts you for the weekend. Give me the best advice, whether it's a Michigan host or any other host or any other school, give me the best advice you got from a host. Um, really just take your time with everything. Like, they're, like they're not going to rush me, but obviously, they're like, sell me their school. But, you know, like, they're all nice about it. All the hosts were great. So they didn't really give me a really point. I don't know, like, why to go there, but it was... Was, yeah. When they gave you the advice to take your time, did you ever mm -hmm. consider waiting until February to sign? Um, no, not really. You know, I took my time a lot throughout this process. I didn't rush it. I didn't want to commit super early and just change my mind and commit to another school. I really took my time to make sure this was the right decision. You mentioned the process. If you could change your rule, that would make it better for the next mm -hmm. generation of student athletes to make this process better. How would you change it? Definitely being able to talk to the coaches at your school. Like, you know, they're taking their time out of their day to come see you and recruit you and want you to come to the university. So hopefully, like, for them to talk to you at your school, like, that just makes sense. So more interaction when they, when they yeah. come to your campus. Yes, sir. All right. Appreciate it, Trevor. Awesome. You look really good. Buddy. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you look good before the makeup. The, the makeup just made things better. Perfect. Mike, with two offensive linemen, one young, one old, back to you. You played <laughs> offensive line? Yeah, uh, 100 years ago. We're, we're all wearing makeup. Again, Trevor, we're all wearing makeup. Don't let us give you crap. Uh, Trevor's the number one player in the state of Illinois, and he's going into the team that has the number one ranking in the Big Ten in Michigan. And, you know, we talk about instant impact, guys. With a group this talented, there could be a bunch. But Zach Charbonnet might be right up top because, remember, Karan Higdon is gone from Michigan. Chris Evans, who was supposed to replace him, is yeah. now off the team. Mm -hmm. The opportunity for him is right there. The opportunity. And you talk about being able to play a position where you can walk in and have a chance. Running back is one of those plays. This is a kid that's 6'2", 215. See how big and physical he is as a runner, but he's also very elusive and does really a good job of getting downhill. Serves you the smooth... Uh, the move, the spin move there, but to me, what's really impressive to be this big and to have that lateral quickness to be able to put your foot in the ground and get north and south so quickly and accelerate shows you there just how tough he is. Does a really good job of making guys miss. And again, you just saw right there, he's going to have an opportunity to play, and that's going to be great for him. Uh, Giles Jackson, wide receiver. Is another young man I think is going to have an opportunity to continue to develop at, at 5'8", 175. He's one of those guys that's going to go up and get the football, and that's what you want. You're finding more and more, you're seeing these slot receivers 
that are able to go up and really fight for the football. They can run the end arounds. They can do it all. He has strong hands. He's a willing guy that wants to block downfield. You see him making the spin move, getting the ball upfield, and then you see the acceleration just takes off and leaves everyone behind. We had Trevor Keegan on. He's part of what I think might be the best unit in this class. Nolan Rumler, uh, a guy who started as a freshman on Akron Hoban's varsity. Michigan offered him, I think, two or three games into that season. So he's been committed for a long time, can play guard, can play center. Extremely strong, physical. You see these, and this is going to be a theme throughout these offensive line highlights in Michigan's class. A lot of pancakes, a lot of guys who played to the whistle. Went down to the Under Armour All-America game in Orlando and had a great week down there as well. Uh, staying on the offensive line, but going into the state of Michigan, Carson Barnhart was a kid you see here played tight end for a lot of his high school career and, and ran routes and caught passes at that size. Also was an outstanding basketball player. He's playing basketball right now, as a matter of fact. And when schools had a chance to see him run the floor and saw the way that he played basketball with intensity, in addition to this athleticism, you see they, uh, that was when all, a lot of his offers came last winter. I mentioned Chris Hinton, the five-star D lineman from Georgia. How'd they get him? Well, he grew up a Michigan fan, committed to the Maize and Blue before he was even a high school junior. Plus, his family has some ties. His dad, Chris Sr., was a first-round NFL draft pick in 1983. And while he had a seven-time Pro Bowl career, he was originally known as the guy that was traded for John Elway. He was the centerpiece of the deal that sent the great quarterback to Denver after he refused to go to Baltimore. And now his son is an elite player in Michigan. And by the way, I can't get over it. Does Trevor not realize how much stronger he is than Jerry? I mean, he could have ended the whole makeup thing just like just, that. Just like that.